bless you. Listen, I want to talk about something that's very important to talk about. Uh, I talked to my wife about it, told her. I'm going to talk about this to the people who are struggling with temptation and lust um, and seduction. It's summertime now. Well, it's springtime, but it's right now it's like 80-something degrees weather. Body going to be out, breast going to be showing, muscles going to be showing. The seductive spirit is very loose when it's summertime, especially on the weekend. They got something called a weekend demon, where that lust demon is very strong on Fridays and Saturdays when they go to the clubs and half-naked bodies are showing. The devil knows what you like. The devil knows what arouses you. But I want to talk about my experiences before I got married to my lovely wife. I've only been married for two years. Praise God. Oh, only married for two years. What took, this, uh, what took you so long, Preacher Warren, for you to get married? Well, uh, I had the wrong ones in my life. I've been waiting on, I've been waiting for God for a wife for a long time, looking for one, and, and I was involved before. First of all, before I even go any further, I've been preaching the gospel since I was six years old. Praise God. I was raised in the church, raised in the prayer room. And you know, it was not always easy preaching the gospel at an early age, especially when you were a child preacher. And when you're preaching against sin. I wasn't preaching no ordinary messages now, just dancing and shouting messages. Yes, I preached dancing message, but when the Lord had me exposed in sin, like Jeremiah or the prophet Samuel at an early age, you know, I wasn't preaching no goody goody messages all the time. So God used me at an early age to preach repentance. So you know, the devil tried me out. Now, here, now have you know, I'm six, seven, eight years old. And then I'm growing up and trying to stay a virgin. Praise God. And, and you know, when older people, there's those who admired me when the Lord used me, and there's those who got mad at me when the Lord used me. And most of my attacks came from a lot of older preachers, elders, pastors. You know, down to the years, I dealt with bishops who would have me in the office and tell me, you're going to fall. Now, these were anointed men of God now telling me I'm going to fall. You're not going to make it. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. And yet they'll preach blessings from the pulpit. But even though they was anointed, they got jealous and mad like King Saul when God was using me at an early age. Because they saw how the people was being blessed in my ministry. So they'll try to wish me to fall and put, try to put curses on me at an early age hoping that I would fall because they didn't like the fact I was preaching against sin. Excuse the siren in the background. I was preaching against sin. So you can know there's a lot of preachers who are playboys, fornicating, committing adultery. So you can know if I was preaching against sin, I didn't realize that they was doing it. Praise God, but the Lord knew. So you can know they wanted me to fall. It would set me up with different girls and send different women in the church who are lustful to try to get me to fall and make a mistake. So being a virgin, a child preacher, growing up down to the years, although I was doing revivals, but after that anointing lift, I was doing it with my flesh. I was doing it with temptation. I was not always under the anointing. Come on, can I keep it real? You know, and when you're growing up in the church where they tell you, if you fornicate, you going to hell. If you commit adultery, you're going to hell. You don't be in the flesh, stay in the spirit. Well, we know that, but we was not taught. How do you go through struggles with the flesh? Uh, uh, we already know not, not to fornicate, which is sex before marriage, but when you're young, praise God. I'm going to talk on some subjects that a lot of preachers ain't going to touch on. Someone make, somebody, somebody may get mad or... Oh, you, 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 you in the flesh. No, I'm, go I, I'm going to keep it real. Oh, there's times I dealt with lust. There's times my homos was acting up. And, and let me tell you something. Everything is not always lust. Certain things are just natural. It's nature for a man to have an attraction for the opposite sex. It's nature for a woman to have an attraction for the opposite sex. Why you think God said it's not good for man to be alone? So God gave Adam a wife and not a knife. It didn't mean that Adam did not love God, but the, the love that Adam had for God and the love that God had for Adam was the agape love. That's not the same kind of love that you have for your wife or your husband. It's, it, it's a big difference. The love that you have for your wife and husband is an eros love. The love that God had for us is called the agape love. It's a different love. Okay, so although Ad, Adam loved God, he had a relationship with God. He was the first man on earth. Actually, Adam was a giant. You study history. Uh, he was about 60 feet. 
Eve was a giant too, along with him. That's another subject. But I know Adam loved God, but Adam was still lonely. So that's why God said it's not good for man to be alone. So God took Eve out the man's side, took his rib and made woman. You know the story according to Genesis because she was still alone. So you could be saved and love Jesus and still be lonely because you're single. It doesn't mean you don't love Jesus. I know many of you out there say, oh, I don't need no man. I love Jesus. Well, maybe that's you. Maybe you're born to be a eunuch. Okay, the Bible talks about the eunuchs. Eunuchs are people who doesn't want to be married. It doesn't mean you were solemnite. It's just that you had no desires to be married. You're just married to Jesus. That's a beautiful thing. But everyone is not a eunuch. There's women who need to be married. That's why the Bible declares in 1 Corinthians, can I keep it real? Someone say, preach Holy Ghost. That's why the Bible declares in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 7. Ah, uh, go to verse 1. Go to verse 2. Let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Not another woman's husband. Not another man's wife. Now drop down to verse 9 of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7. It's better to marry than to burn. Than to burn. Many of you are burning in your flesh. And certain things, it's not always flesh. Certain things are just hormones. That's nature. See, that's the body saying that they want to produce. That's the body that wants to make love with a woman or make love with a man. That's just nature. God told, remember, God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. So you must know the difference between nature, hormones, and lust. That's deep. Everything is not always lust. Now, I can tell when it's lust because the demon attacks you with the spirit of pornography. So you can go into masturbation. So masturbation is when you have sex in your mind. That's why you must have the mind of Christ. I know Jesus said the lust after the woman in your heart, you, you, you already committed adultery. Praise the Lord. And sometimes that's easier said than done. That's why you have to stay in prayer because the devil is sin. Beautiful women around you. It's not wrong for women to be beautiful because God made women beautiful. It's not wrong for men to be handsome. But many women have used their beauty to go around seducing men. Read the book of Proverbs, chapter number 6. It talks about the adulterous woman. Okay, who go around lusting at the different men and women can be very dangerous. We love the women of God. We love you women. But use your beauty for the right thing. There's two kind of women in the Bible. You had Queen Jezebel, then you had Queen Esther. Now, if you're asking God for a wife, <laughs> if, you wanna, if you get a knife, that's a Queen Jezebel. But if you want a good virtuous woman, ask God for a Queen Esther, our roof. A virtuous woman, according to Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 10 on down. Okay, to verse 31. Now, I want to talk about my experiences being a virgin before I get married to my lovely wife. Praise. Let's go to part two. Uh, just type my experiences and struggles being a virgin before getting married. Preacher Warren. Let's go to part two.